Good morning. We're going to take the derivative of this function that involves a logarithm. Uh, again, we have this uh, square root around the entire logarithmic expression. So therefore, it's not an exponent of x. So we can't use logarithmic properties to change this. However, uh, I could, to make it a little easier, rewrite this as the uh, x times the natural log of x raised to the power of one half. I, I think that's a little easier. Um, now we have a product of functions and a, a product of, a, of one function times a composition of another function. So we'll use the chain rule and the product rule. At this point in your derivative careers, you should probably be used to stuff like that, uh, to be using all of them at once. Um, so we have the first function, which is just x times the derivative of the second. We bring the power of one half down in front times the argument stays, or the ln of x stays for right now, or well, that one does anyway. Reduce one half by one, you get negative one half. And then we take the derivative of the inside, uh, which is the derivative of ln of x, which is just x. There's going to be some cleaning up to be done. Plus the derivative of the first, which is just x, I mean 1, the derivative of x is 1 times the ln of x all raised to the 1 half power. So now um, I can clean this up a little bit. Um, x over x, well those are just going to cancel or you know they'll simplify out and then I'll write uh, I'll put my powers of half back into root notation and this expression will be 1 over 2 root ln of x plus uh, the root of ln of x and if I wanted to be fancy I could get a common denominator and I don't know I feel like it so I go y prime, I need a 2 ln of x over here, so I'll get 1 plus uh, 2 square roots of ln of x times, I need a 2 square root of ln of x in the denominator here. Uh, so when I multiply 2 square roots of ln of x times the square root of ln of x, I get 2 times the ln of x divided by 2 square roots of the ln of x. And yeah, that just makes it look pretty. Um, there, there is reason to do that. Um, if you were looking for where this uh, derivative equaled uh, zero, the, the slope of the tangent line equaled zero, you, it would be much easier to set this equal to zero and uh, yeah, that would be worth it. I think so. Although it wouldn't be, I don't think it would be in the domain of the function to begin with though. Yeah, because you get, uh, I don't know why I'm rambling off about this, but uh, you would get uh, 1 plus 2 ln of x uh, equals 0, so you get the ln of x equals negative 1 half, and that would imply that uh, x would equal e to the negative one half, which is one over e to the one half. Oh, maybe it is in the domain. Yeah, it would be, it would be worth it. I don't know why I rambled off. That really has nothing to do with this problem. Um, this is the derivative. Sorry.